Recently, there was an unusual solar storm on the Sun, which formed a giant fire canyon. NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory showed a vivid animation of this huge ejection of charged plasma. The solar wind reached Earth in April 2022, and on August the 9th, after a solar flare, charged particles bombarded our planet again. Life on Earth depends on the Sun, a colossal ball of gas that radiates immense heat. Its temperature ranges from a scorching 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, 15 million degrees Celsius, at its core to a relatively cooler 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit, 5,500 degrees Celsius, at its surface, as reported by NASA. Notably, every 1.5 millionths of a second, the Sun emits more energy than humanity consumes in an entire year. I bet these details already blew your mind away, so get ready as we unravel the most mind-blowing facts about the Sun. We'll also discuss with a solar researcher at the Space Sciences Laboratory and a former astronaut at NASA to address the most wanted questions about the Sun. The Sun is approaching its peak activity phase, known as solar maximum, within its 11-year solar cycle. This cycle, driven by the Sun's magnetic field, is characterized by increased sunspot frequency and intensity. However, scientists cannot confirm the occurrence of solar maximum until at least seven months after it happens. We needed insights from the European Space Weather Coordination Center to understand the reasons behind this delay. Solar experts utilize a convention where the maximum of the solar cycle is determined using the 13-month smoothed sunspot number. This calculation, employing data from six months before and six months after a given date, means that the precise value for a specific time is only known six months later. Determining if solar maximum occurred in a particular month requires observing lower sunspot numbers in the following month. So, confirmation can only occur at least seven months after this decline. Predictions from the NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center, SWPC, suggest potential windows for solar maximum occurrence between mid-2024, end of 2025, and late 2024 to early 2026. According to scientists, solar activity is likely still increasing, offering promising opportunities for witnessing the spectacular aurora borealis, or northern lights. Auroras occur when energized particles from the sun's solar wind interact with Earth's magnetic field, directing them toward the poles. Upon entering Earth's atmosphere, these particles interact with atmospheric atoms and molecules, resulting in the fluorescence of the atmosphere. The colors of auroras vary based on the chemical makeup of Earth's atmosphere. Even if you miss the solar maximum period in the coming years, there's no need to panic. Auroras persist throughout the solar cycle, thanks to weak to moderate coronal mass ejections associated with filament eruptions. These events sustain the background geomagnetic activity necessary for aurora formation, ensuring their visibility regardless of solar activity levels. Where does the sun's heat come from? The sun, primarily composed of gas and plasma, predominantly consists of hydrogen, making up 92% of its composition. Within the sun's core, the immense gravitational forces compress hydrogen atoms, generating intense pressure. Under such conditions, hydrogen atoms collide forcefully, initiating nuclear fusion and forming helium. The specific nuclear reaction that powers the sun is fusion, fusion of hydrogen into helium. You take two hydrogen atoms, you ram them together, and what's left over is a helium atom. This ongoing fusion process results in a buildup of energy, elevating the sun's core temperatures to approximately 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, 15 million degrees Celsius. Subsequently, this energy radiates outward, illuminating the sun's surface, atmosphere, and extending beyond into space. Radiative zone temperatures. Further into the sun's core lies the radiative zone, 
In this layer, thermal convection does not occur, as reported by scientists. Instead, heat is transferred through thermal radiation, at which point hydrogen and helium atoms emit photons, commonly known as light particles. These photons travel short distances before being absorbed by other ions. It can take thousands of years for light particles to navigate through this layer before finally reaching the sun's surface. Following the radiative zone, the sun's convective zone spans 120,000 miles or 200,000 kilometers. Within this region, temperatures reach around 4 million degrees Fahrenheit or 2 million degrees Celsius. Plasma within the convective zone presents movements similar to boiling water, where bubbles of hot plasma rise to the surface, transporting heat throughout the sun's layers. Let's now discuss how does our sun's temperature compare to other stars. Stars exhibit diverse sizes, colors, and temperatures, with astronomers gauging temperature primarily by spectral type or color. The seven spectral types, labeled O, B, a, F, G, K, and M classify stars based on temperature. O and B stars, the hottest, emit predominantly blue light with significant ultraviolet radiation. Opposite, M-type stars, the coolest, emit mainly red and infrared light. Blue stars boast surface temperatures around 44,500 Fahrenheit, while red stars are much cooler at approximately 5,000 Fahrenheit. White stars fall in between, with temperatures around 17,000 Fahrenheit, while yellow stars, like the Sun, hover around 10,000 Fahrenheit. These temperature variations across spectral types illustrate the diverse nature of stars and show us that our Sun isn't the most powerful star that we know of, it's just the closest one to us of its dimension and heat. However, we also know that empty space isn't a great place to travel in, but why is that? Why is space so cold if the stars are so hot? Heat from stars travels through space as radiation, but unlike on Earth where heat spreads through air and other methods, space is mostly empty, so heat only warms up objects it directly hits. This means that areas in space not facing the sun stay cold, Spacecraft near the sun use special shields to stay cool in extreme heat. Despite these wild temperature differences, Earth's atmosphere keeps our planet comfy for life. Let's now start the fun part of this video, the moment we consult an actual expert. We turn to Jia Huang, a solar researcher at UC Berkeley's Space Sciences Laboratory, to address the most wanted question about the sun. First up, how do we know the temperature of the sun? According to Huang, we estimate the sun's temperature through theory and observation. In theory, temperatures of various solar layers are estimated by considering some physical processes. However, temperatures of layers above the photosphere are directly measured using remote telescopes or in situ instruments aboard spacecraft, particularly in the solar corona when the Parker Solar Probe enters it. But what is the Parker Solar Probe? Launched in August 2018, the Parker Solar Probe orbits the Sun, aiming to unravel the mystery of the corona's unusually high temperature compared to the photosphere. This spacecraft braves extreme conditions, flying through the Sun's atmosphere and enduring intense temperatures, sometimes approaching as close as 3.8 million miles, 6.1 million kilometers, to the Sun's surface, which doesn't sound that much. But remember, temperatures vary between a few thousand degrees Celsius, which is still a lot, to almost 1.000 degrees. During its mission, it gathers crucial data on the corona, solar winds, and captures images of the star. In 2021, the Parker Solar Probe set a new speed record for human-made crafts, traveling at up to 430,000 miles per hour, 700,000 kph, when closest to the sun, according to NASA's Parker Solar Probe page. For those of you who made it this far in the video, you really must be passionate about our universe, so here are the craziest facts about the sun that our team could find for you. What 
color is the sun. Everyone knows that the sun is yellow, right? Well, in space, the sun appears white. That's because it emits light across all visible colors, which our eyes blend together. However, on Earth, our atmosphere affects how we see it. Blue light scatters more, making the sun seem less blue and more yellow. Also, the atmosphere filters out harmful radiation, leaving us with a warm, yellowish view. During sunrises and sunsets, even more blue light scatters, making the sun appear more red. In the future, as the sun changes into a red giant, it will still look yellowish instead of red to us if we view it from Earth. Another mind-blowing fact is that the sun makes up 99.866% of the mass of our solar system. It weighs approximately 500 times more than all planets and asteroids combined, with even Jupiter's mass being only a fraction of the sun's. Compared to Earth, the sun is about 333,000 times heavier. Remarkably, the sun could accommodate around 1.3 million Earth-sized planets within its volume. You might know that the solar corona, aptly named for its resemblance to a crown, is the outer layer of the sun, characterized by protuberances and plasma eruptions. But did you know that these formations often extend hundreds of thousands of kilometers, surpassing the Earth-Moon distance? Despite being one of the hottest regions of the Sun, with an average temperature of 1, 2 million degrees Kelvin, certain areas within the corona can reach temperatures as high as 20 million degrees Kelvin. Observing the solar corona is only possible during a total solar eclipse from Earth. Last but not least, at the age of 10.9 billion years, the Sun's core will start getting depleted of hydrogen. Our star will swell and in a few hundred million years, it will turn into a subgiant, an orange star, whose radius will be 2.3 times larger than today. At the age of 12.2 billion years, a thermonuclear reaction will begin in the outer layers of the sun and it will start swelling even more. Our luminary will turn into a red giant and absorb the inner planets. These transformations will end with the outer layers of the red giant flying into space and the inner one shrinking down to the state of a white dwarf. If you managed to watch the video all the way to the end, I also left you here two other videos that you might find interesting to watch. Until next time, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing content. See you in the next one. See you in the next one.